Hi, welcome to the next in a series of fireside chats that we are having twice a week, usually on a Tuesday and on a Friday. It's good to be with you today and we're with you because in large part, Judy Zerubic has really learned a lot about Zoom technology and is making all of this happen, recording it so that we can post it on our YouTube channel. And the link is also on our website. Uh, just look for Gord's Reflections and Fireside Chats and, and the menu will be there. Uh, as usual, there's always lots. It, it, it's often hard to think about uh, the situation in which we find ourselves with, with any kind of humor. But I was thinking back to the panic buying a few weeks ago of all the toilet paper. So uh, when I went to the grocery store yesterday, I noticed that while toilet paper and paper towels were in short supply, there was product available. However, all the facial tissue was sold out. It reminded me of a Facebook post I saw the other day, and it went something like this. My grandson saw the empty toilet paper shelves in the grocery store and asked, does this mean everyone will start using pull-ups? I responded, depends. You know, the adult diaper, the brand, depends. My, uh, my brother was one who always got Legos for Christmas. I got uh, mechan uh, Meccano sets, but he got Lego and I was always uh, jealous. And so here's a, here's a cartoon that is taken from a Lego perspective in washing your hands. And I must admit that back in the 70s, the late, the late 60s and early 70s, I bought every single digest of uh, Peanuts cartoons. So here's, here's one of them that from way back when seems to have really reflected our experience these days. And not only that, but as we find ourselves isolated at home, and that's good because we're looking after one another by staying at home, people get the strangest ideas as to things that they might like to try when they get, shall we say, bored. Consider this one. I must admit, I never would have thought of filling my teacup that way. Uh, and then, I was frustrated when I saw down uh, in the States uh, a number of churches that were that decided that they were going to stay open and you know a thousand or so people were in worship and all I could think about was you're not really thinking about others you're just thinking about yourselves and this cartoon came up on my Facebook feed. It certainly brings home the reality that we assume that God is going to rescue us from above when in fact God provides us with all the resources we need. And one of those resources is a brain and, and wisdom to try and think things through. And when we are staying home so much, there's a new hierarchy of needs. Uh, uh, apologies to Maslow, but Here's the relative importance in 2020 so far of coffee, car, internet, shaving, and that's for men and women, and sweatpants. All right, so much for my twisted sense of humor. Um, there's, uh, we, we, we are in the season of Easter, yet we often don't feel very Easter-y in the midst of staying at home missing our families and worrying about a COVID-19 infection, especially with two uh, verified cases of COVID-19 here in Kincardine. In fact, we may think of the Last Supper in our minds in this season of Easter, inaugurated by Jesus foreshadowing the likelihood of his crucifixion and death, but also foreshadowing the promise and the hope of the resurrection at the Last Supper. After all, his words do this in remembrance of me, show his expectation that the disciples would do this in remembrance of him. So here's a modern take on that Last Supper. This isn't, there it is. Notice that the healthcare workers have placed themselves at a table just like the painting classic 
Um, and it gives us an indication of how much that they are in communion with all of us in trying to do this in remembrance of me. After all, when the, woman for, the women first saw the risen Christ, they were both terrified and joyful. And that's how this video I'm about to show you has affected me. This song was recorded separately by an ad hoc choir of female healthcare providers and edited into one video by a group called Voices Rock Medicine. Many of you will recognize this as a song popularized by the East Coast Roots group, the Rankin family. Now that was back in the early 80s. This song was written by Leon Dubinsky, a songwriter from Sydney, Nova Scotia. It was meant to be an anthem of resilience and of hope at a time when Cape Breton was going through an economic crisis. According to Dubinsky, the song is about the cycles of immigration, the economic insecurity of living in Cape Breton, the power of the ocean, the meaning of children and the strength of home given to us by our families, our friends, and our music. I think it has an awful lot of connection to how we are feeling in these days of pandemic and social isolation, physical distancing. Maybe it is more about how we are lifted to rise again when we trust the risen one. So let, we're gonna put the video up for you and I'm gonna shut up so you can hear it.
I must admit, when I watch that particular video, I tear up. And when I tear up, I, I know why. Inside of myself, I'm worried about my daughter, paramedic. I'm worried about my ex-wife, who is a nurse and will apparently start next week. Instead of working at the hospital, go into a long-term care facility because they need more staff, as we obviously know these days. I think about my niece's husband, who is a nurse that floats all over Grand River Hospital in Kitchener. And these words really touch a deep and abiding place in my heart, a place of grief, but also a place of hope. Notice some of the words in the song, the waves roll on over the water and the oceans rise. There is a, a, a rhythm of the rolling waves. There, there is predictability in the twice daily ebb and flow of the tides. This is life. Life has its ups and downs, its tragedies and its joys. Then the lyrics suggest that we look to our sons and daughters to explain our lives. There too is the rhythm of life, of birth and death, of generations past and generations yet to come. Life is persistent, pervasive, and powerful. Yet waves can be destructive. Tides can wash much of what we treasure away as if it had never been. What do we do then, as the song says, when the light goes dark in the forces of creation across the stony spine? How do we survive in the midst of this pandemic? How do we find the power of rising again? As the picture coming up on the screen would instruct us, maybe we need to celebrate Easter differently. The words of the song draw us back from the precipice. They tell us, and it's sure as the sunrise, sure as the sea, sure as the wind in the trees, that we will find our meaning, our purpose. In the rhythm of life, death always gives way to new life. Destruction gives way to new possibilities. The gloom of night gives way to the brilliant light of day. This is a promise into which we can lean. This is the assurance that we can not only rise again, but that we will rise again. As the song says, we rise again in the faces of our children. We can see in our children, in those generations growing into adulthood, evidence of the rising of life even out of death. We rise again in the voices of our song tells us that even as we grieve what we have lost, our voices will ever rise with celebration, with relief once this crisis is gradually abating. Hope abounds because that is the nature of Christ's resurrection and the very ground out of which our life springs. Hope lies in the reality we are experiencing even now. Let me use people I've heard about from within our congregation as examples of hope lived fully and vibrantly. Hope is in donations that have allowed a family to purchase a computer for homework that is given and submitted electronically. Hope is the two members of our family of faith who are sewing cloth masks for those wishing to protect their neighbors by wearing them. Hope is those dedicated many who are phoning others to check in and to provide a friendly voice of compassionate caring. Hope is when groceries or medications are delivered to people who need to be isolated. Hope is when we gather to watch Sunday worship by live streaming. We are a gathered body living into the resurrection, even at a distance. Consider this picture about the difference between optimism and hope.
Hope is trust in our loving God. Hope is trust in the same one who gave his own life to show us the reign of God through sacrificial love. Hope is trust in the movement of the Spirit to guide us, to strengthen us, and to bolster our own loving kindness. So with that hope in mind, I invite you that we pause and pray. God of princes, God of nurses, this disease is a great leveler. It has humbled our rulers and exalted our servants. As this nation, this province is locked down, we think of a world turned upside down while we pray in silence. We lift into your heart, O God, with thanks, those who serve us in our need, those who make us safer in this abnormal way of living. We lift to you the grocery clerks and the truckers, the sanitation workers and the cleaners or disinfectant specialists, the child care providers and the grandparents babysitting far more than they dreamed the migrant farm workers who plant and harvest the fresh food we will consume, and the funeral home staff providing final rites when families are not allowed there, the pharmacists who keep our medications coming, and the people changing their manufacturing production lines to produce personal protective equipment and ventilators, the artists who lift our spirits with song with drama, with comedy, and with paintings, all of it from a distance and shared electronically. There are so many, oh God, so for them and for your movement within them, we give silent thanks. As we breathe deeply of your presence, we embrace Easter hope. In these rhythms of life, we rediscover our trust in you. In Christ's rising, we know we too will rise again. As the waves roll, we will rise again. As the tides ebb and flow, we will rise again. As your disciples, we will rise again in the name of love. Amen. I pray that everyone is following the way of Jesus, which is the way of love. Now, consider this final picture and what it says. It is this way, how we live love into this changed world, how we love in Jesus' name. We sacrifice for one another that we may all be well as we stay home. So I'd like to offer you a blessing that I uh, experienced a number of times when I was living in uh, 2014 for a week at the Iona community in Scotland a religious community of Celtic faith that deeply touched my soul. So here's a blessing for all of you as a gift. God to enfold me, God to surround me, God in my speaking, God in my thinking, God in my sleeping, God in my waking, God in my watching, God in my hoping, God in my life, God in my lips, God in my soul, God in my heart, God in my sufficing, 
God in my slumber, God in my ever living soul, God in mine eternity. Go in peace until we meet again. We'll see you on Tuesday.